Senegal is set to hold its delayed presidential elections on Sunday amidst a tense political atmosphere caused by the failure of President Macky Sall to postpone the vote and the release of two key opposition figures from prison. Opposition leader Osman Sonko was released from prison last week, sparking wild jubilations in the streets of Dakar and adding to the excitement of the much-anticipated elections. Now joining me on the program to make sense of this is Dr. Pepe uh, Bertrand, a senior lecturer at uh, University Shatner Antia Diop from Dakar, Senegal, and also Imo Edet, public affairs analyst also from Senegal. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, let me start off with you, uh, Dr. Uh, Sharif. What, what, is, uh, what would you consider the political uh, mood or uh, atmosphere right now uh, in Senegal ahead of just uh, the elections, just uh, days away? Oh, I can give you an idea, and this is also something, you know, I'm giving a historical perspective. And we, with a colleague, we write something on the newspaper about, you know, the joking relationship. So this election is about how to exploit our cultural heritage and to build a new form of democracy towards, you know, against the system, because, you know, we're talking about patriot and pan-Africanism, which is the ideal that Usman Sonko is giving to the youth. So we came out with this idea that, you know, the youth is now exploiting a national imaginary that Usman Sonko, the team of, of Usman Sonko, who is, you know, okay, let's say someone historically belonging to the South and someone from the middle of Senegal, because during this campaign, we hear that something tending to kind of ethnicity. So at the end of the day, after this state brutality, we are trying to build a new nation. And the imaginary that we are using right now is the joking relationship. This is, you know, this is something Makisal tried when he came to power in 2015. This is something we can read from Sheikh Antadjob, African Unity. This is something we can also learn from, culturally speaking, from Senghor. And to face, you know, what is happening right now, people are building around this idea that we are all the same. Whatever happened to Usman Sonko, who used to say that Makisal hates those from the South, now we are building a new nation towards this joking relationship. This is what I love beyond, you know, these kind of masquerade or carnival, there is something we have to learn. This is the youth now is trying to build a new nation based on what we learned from Sheikh Antadjob, African unity. By the way, PASTEF is about African unity and also cultural relationship. And Usman Sonko and Jomai were crying, you know, the possibility to give that lecture, how to use our African culture and to fight about or to build this notion of democracy. Because I can tell you, if we use the European concept of democracy, right now we are not in democracy. This election is not about democracy. This is something else. All right, let, let me move to you, Imo. What do you uh, consider the political climate right now in Senegal vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, drama, you know, that we've seen uh, in recent weeks uh, from the president, you know, initially announcing a postponement uh, and then the release of Usman Sonko. Uh, and, of course, uh, just a few days from now, we're seeing the elections happening. What would you say, you know, is the political mm -hmm. climate right now in Senegal? I think it's, it's, it's really tense, um, culminating to what we're going to see tomorrow, uh, what we're going to see on Sunday, uh, starting from, you know, the uh, 2021 protests, the 2022 agitations, and uh, the arrest, the trials, and all of that, uh, I, I think it makes the entire scenario um, worth acting now. Or uh, you can actually write a book about this scenario, which is very strict. Are you there, Imon? 
Okay, I think we are having a bit of connection issues uh, with uh, Emo. But uh, let me stay with you, uh, Dr. Bertrand. This uh, drama that, of course, we are seeing, and uh, in the words of uh, Emo, the political tension seems to be the first of its kind uh, to be experienced in Senegal. How important or how pivotal will you say this election is to the country? Oh, yeah. Again, understand me. This is why I'm surfing over this notion of we are trying to pardon. And how can you pardon and forget what happened? Because we believe that we are not... It's not the first time. We can go back to Senegal. You know, Senegal, we, we are very keen in fabricating our democracy, our model of democracy, by forgetting what happened. And we are in that process. How to forget what happens in a few days ago and build something new? I listen to Usman Sonko. You know what they are saying? They are saying, you know, this year, we are not going to celebrate Independence Day. We are going to celebrate National Day. So, we, we, I mean, what does it mean? It means that we no longer need to use the concept, you know, Western concept, uh, you know, to conceive our democracy. We no longer, we, we want to bring something from Africa, from our roots, to build a new nation. And again, the reason why I refuse to look back it's because those who are coming to in power, and I hope so on, on, on Sunday, this is a youth that wants to bring something new. And they are not looking backwards. They are not looking about the tragedy that happens. This may be justice will try to do it, but they are selling an imaginary, what kind of nation they are going to build. And that nation is not about, you know, going to look at what Makisa has done against them. But it's about forging a nation based on that imaginary that we are the same unicity, African unity, indeed. And again, joking relationship, that is the Sarah, uh, the Wolof, are the same. Because during this election, people tend to think that, you know, even some politicians try to bring that, you know, differentiation between the ethnic groups. And Usman Sonko, the duo, Usman Sonko and Jomai, again, they are experimenting mm. something that Senghor and Shehan Tajob indeed, you know, um, you know, fathomed. Can uh, I say that? Prof Dr. Dr. Bertrand, uh, just let me, you know, hold you there for a second and go back to Emo. Now, uh, Ali Oni Tine, that's uh, the founder of Africa Jam, a Senegalese think tank, said that uh, Sunday's election has set a grim record in Senegal's political history with a various rights group accusing President Macky Sall of represent the civil society, a media, and of course the opposition. Uh, what do you make of uh, this particular a statement by this uh, rights activist and also uh, uh, some of the things that uh, doctor said. Mm. Well, I, I think uh, clearly he's right and uh, there's been repression, which is what we saw, not just to the opposition group, but to even the media at some point. Uh, this is um, part of what the people were calling for. Let there be an all-inclusive election an election that even the opposition will be part of, the dissent, those who criticize your government can be part of. And, you know, this was uh, part of what built up to the, um, to the violence that was social, which we saw a couple of months back and two years ago. And, you know, building up also to the national dialogue, which we saw, and then uh, the eventual uh, fixing of the election day. I mean, we've seen a very tense um, uh, political climate in the last uh, two years, to say, uh, since, you know, Sonko came out and made himself available to run for the seat of the president. I mean, it's been from one hot water to another, one trouble to another, one court case to another, and eventually uh, that saw him being thrown into prison and uh, delisted from the electoral uh, register as a thief. So it's really been tense. And let's hope that lessons will be learned from, from this situation. And, you know, even President Macassar is saying that, I mean, he has no reason to apologize for what has happened. And that has really got everybody talking. I mean, you have delayed an election from its usual date. Uh, uh, under your tenor, we've seen uh, civic unrest. We've seen uh, manifestation or demonstrations that have received. And then yet you're not apologetic about it. What about the lives that have been lost? You know, so many people are, are, are talking about this. And not so much of, a, of, of the population are, are happy about the outcome of the dialogue, which brought about the, uh, the amnesty law, you know, which was part of what saw the likes of Sonko 
and Jamai Five being released from prison. So, I mean, far from the truth, we, we've had a very repressive uh, last two years, media inclusive, TSO's descent. I mean, um, there are a whole lot of political prisoners captured, you know, who were eventually released during this uh, period of, of amnesty. So, uh, it's been a very difficult time. Let's hope that they, whoever comes in, you know, will factor in all of this uh, drama that played out in the last two years and allow everybody to come in and then uh, we see an inclusive government. Mm. All right, now, um, I mean, this particular election has 19 candidates in the race, the highest in the history of Senegal. And, of course, the ruling party has picked uh, Amadou Ba, 62-year-old, the former prime minister and also finance minister as its candidate. Now, Amadou actually faces crowded opposition of 18 contestants. Part of them includes uh, the 43-year-old former tax inspector, that's uh, Basiru Dumoye Faye, who, of course, gained enormous you know, support and popularity after Usman Sonko said was going to back him. Now, my question to you uh, is this, doctor. What do you see, you know, as uh, a potential eventual outcome, you know, on Sunday? Oh, you, you know, here I can use math. If I remember the last time someone ran an election under Macky Sall uh, as the leader of the party, it's in 2022. It was the former prime minister, Aminata Toure. And during this election against Osman Sonko, who was also the leader of the opposition, but without being the one because his list was eliminated. So Aminata Toure running with the support of President Macky Sall gained about 46% of the electoral vote. So I can start by this hypothesis that whoever runs under the name of Macky Sall can gain at least 46% of the electoral vote. However, Amadouba, who is running under Macky Sall, under Macky Sall name, so we'll start with 46%. Unfortunately, in the same party, they have four candidates. So if I share it by four, I think Amadouba will be looking to have, you know, let's, let's say about 10% or hope to have 15%. Uh -huh. you know, to hope to be, yeah, this is what I think. Because even Macky Sall is not supporting him. And people are thinking that Macky Sall is supporting someone else and Amadouba is not his candidate. Oh, Amadouba main dilemma or main, you know, struggle will be how to get to 15%. This is my calculation based on the fact that the last person who ran under Macky Sall's name and who was supported by President Macky Sall won only 46%. But now we have four persons running under Macky Sall names because they belong to the same party, and Macky Sall is supporting none of them. The only support that Amadou Ba had is that he was the former prime minister of Macky Sall, and he was being chosen by President Macky Sall. But unfortunately for him, right now, people knew that he's not in good terms with the president. Hmm. So he can hope to have 15%. Otherwise, I don't think he will be on second even... I don't think even we are going to have a second term, but I don't see him there. All right. Uh, I mean, we would have loved to continue, but this is the big time will permit us. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Dr. Pape, a sheriff, a Bertrand, a senior lecturer, and of course, uh, the university and also uh, Imo. Uh, thank you for your time on the program. Thank you for having thank us. You. Imo, let's thank you. Let's have us. All right. And, of course, that's uh, the beat we can take on today's episode. Thank you for joining in. My name is Dakbo Adigboye. Bye for now.